Hey there. So today we're going to do the reduction of benzophenone. Uh, all we're going to be using is a couple simple reagents, benzophenone and sodium borohydride, and we're going to be dissolving that in a little bit of isopropyl alcohol in order to allow this to reflux for about half an hour before we do the workup. So what we'll do first is we'll measure out the sodium borohydride into the flask that we're going to be using. Make sure I get a clean scupula. Now, get as close to 0.180 as possible. And just make note of whether there's a little bit too much or too little. So if you look at your procedure, you'll notice that it says 0.06 grams. In this case, all the reagents were going to be tripling uh, for this experiment. It's pretty chunky too, so I might have to break this up. Try not to uh, spill too much of this because it's pretty dangerous if you mix it with water. It makes a lot of hydrogen gas. All right? Chunks there. Couple chunks. Couple more chunks. This stuff is pretty chunky. Oh, 0 0.180. So that's good. That's plenty for what we need today. Make sure you give this a little rinse with DIY water before you reuse it because sodium borohydride is not something you want to put into other bottles of reagents. So next we're going to take this, we're going to add 9 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol, which I already poured into a smaller container because all we had was this larger container before. And I'm going to try to do this with some finesse, working inside the hood. So we're just going to let the slurry sort of mix together. And I'm going to leave this over in the hood until I need it. Or you do a sweet boomerang too. <laughs> All right. So as I mentioned before, you want to make sure that you rinse off, <laughs> rinse off this uh, scupula. Get a wave out and tear it to zero. And so we're going to be measuring out 1.65 grams of the benzophenone, aka diphenyl ketone. Try to avoid wasting any, so you always want to add less before you add lots more. You can't really put it back once you take it out. We'll call that good. 1.67 is pretty close. So for now, we're just going to take all of this benzophenone and we're going to try to bring it over to our flask and get all of this material directly into this flask. Um, so just bend your wave boat in half, just tip it in. And give it a swirl. You're going to get this ready for a reflux for 30 minutes and you will clamp this in place, lower it and put it in good contact with the mantle so it's not going anywhere. You're going to take your reflux condenser, this is the same one from the other reaction I was doing so I gave it a good rinse. You're going to place it right where it was before, right into the joint. And All right, so we've been letting this go for about half an hour. And now we're just gonna pull it off of the heat and let it sit and cool in our cork ring right here. So I'm gonna flip off the switch and I'm going to allow the mantle to, the, or lift the, lift the uh, flask away from the mantle. And you wanna keep this steady because apparently this is not, there we go, that's a little bit better. Um, and you want to slightly lower it so it's not too high up. Set it down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually remove this because it's putting a little bit of extra pressure on the joint. And I'm going to slowly release the flask and transfer it over to the cork ring. 
You may use uh, gloves for this because it's, sometimes it's a little bit hot, so like a heat resistant glove. But for me, my hands are kind of worn down, so I don't really feel it as much. Um, and you're just gonna let this cool to room temperature while you prepare for your extraction. Once that's ready to go, we'll get to the next step and uh, we'll see it from there. All right, so we've allowed this to cool a bit. I tidied up in the hood over here. Um, and this is at room temperature now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by adding about 10 milliliters of, DC, of the uh, NaOH, 10% solution. Should be uh, all of this, I suspect. We're gonna just carefully transfer that. Hopefully we have all 10 mils. Perfect. And we're gonna just dunk that in there. That's just to break up the pour register, uh, which is a byproduct of the um, process of, uh, of reduction with certain boral hydrate. We also want to make sure that we get all of the solids fully dissolved in this mixture. So once we let this react a little bit with the sodium hydroxide, We're going to add a little bit of water just to break up the last odds and ends in this mixture. Also, if there's any remaining sodium borohydride, that'll react with the water because the sodium borohydride acts as a base. You'll probably see a little bit of fizzing, um, and that's just excess sodium borohydride. You also want to be aware of the boiling stones in the mixture. The boiling stones uh, you don't want to transfer into the separatory funnel, especially because they potentially clog the stopcock and that'll make your whole process very difficult. You probably have to stop everything you're doing and clean your uh, separatory funnel. No good on that. So get a little bit more time on this to break up those chunks. All right. So we're gonna transfer this over to the separatory funnel. And when I do that, you wanna make sure that you always double check that the stopcock is closed before you attempt that. We're also gonna do our best to avoid transferring any of the solids at the bottom of this, of this flask. Um, that'll make sure we don't have any clogging going on. I'm going to rinse this with a little bit of extra water just to get any last traces of potential product into our mixture. And the water took care of the extra chunks of sodium borohydride that we split real quick. All right, so you can sort of see a partition forming here, a little uh, phase barrier. And we're starting to have, in this case, the aqueous portion is probably sitting on the bottom um, because it's made out of H2O and H2O usually has a large uh, or, or relatively large compared to organic solvents um, density. However, we're about to use some DCM and that's gonna change things around a lot. Usually DCM has a density of about 1.33, and so it's gonna be the more dense of the two layers, and you're gonna end up seeing that go to the bottom. So I poured myself some DCM ahead of time, and we're gonna use two 15 milliliter portions. So I'm just gonna pour it into here. Now we begin the separation. Just a shake. Make sure that you place your palm on the stopper, turn it upside down, and allow it to empty out as you shake. The mixing is going to potentially release a little bit of energy 
and also the warmth of your hand can heat up the solvent, especially for DCM, which is pretty volatile. And so you always want to be releasing the gas. Otherwise, you're going to it's going to blow out the stopper on the bottom, and you're going to have a huge mess of your hands. So whenever you're working with halogenated solvents, in general, you're always going to have a much denser um, organic layer. Um, in the case of let's say DCM, especially, or if you had like let's say dibromomethane, similar effect. Um, and so the bottom layer is going to be our organic layer. Unfortunately, it appears that this is sort of formed a bit of an illusion. So hopefully this clears up on the on the sooner side than the later side. A little bit. <laughs> This helps a little. Kind of let the layers separate here. You're starting to clear up down here. In the meantime, I'm tidying things up around here. We'll grab this, will be our organic. Portion. And we'll have the aqueous layer in another beaker, which I'll grab in the meantime. We're not really that interested in the aqueous layer, so we can probably just dispose of it. And it never hurts to be diligent and keep a nice clean beaker handy, but uh, in this case, uh, we'll just dispose of it in a regular old beaker that we have lying around. See if we can get a little bit of better separation. 15 milliliters is a pretty small portion anyways, so we kind of expect that's about all the volume we're going to get. And now we're just going to add that second portion of DCM. And we will, again, this up. Um, it might be difficult to pick out what's the organic layer and what's not the organic layer, right? So in this case, you see a couple different layers here. To exacerbate the difference in the phase boundary uh, for let's say the aqueous layer and the organic layer, one thing you can do is you can add a little bit of salt water uh, to make it more the water more ionic. Um, and it's not gonna affect the product, so we'll just do a little bit of that here. And then we have a little bit of DCM left, and that will also be a very organic solvent very non-polar relatively speaking. And whether or not you're actually you know changing the concentrations in there too much, one thing it will definitely do is it will allow you to at least potentially visualize where that boundary is. Here you can see it somewhere in the middle and we know that as long as we collect most of this organic layer then we're probably pretty good. So we'll do that right now. Make sure that we're not too high here, we don't want to touch splashing. And take the rest of this DCM out of here. I mean, I would say that's pretty much good enough. You don't want to put too much extra water if you don't have to. If you have all the water on top, that's just trying to get into your organic. Just may as well just leave it behind. So we can see in this mixture that there's actually quite a bit of water there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this to an even bigger container to make sure that I don't have too much extra water and I can add enough big sulfate to dry everything properly. Transfer everything into here. Grab a scoopula.
and there's a lot of water in here so I'm just gonna add a pretty heaping amount. Or this reaction in this flask is actually acting a little exothermically and the low boiling point of DCM is causing the solution to kind of boil a little bit in this flask earlier. So just as before, in other experiments, to make a gravity filter, all you're going to have to do is take the filter paper, fold it in half, fold it in half again, open up one side, and then crease in order to create a square filter. Put this in the center and you're going to aim to always get directly in the filter because if it goes past the filter then you're not going <laughs> to, you're kind of going to defeat the purpose of the filter. And now we filter, which can take a while. <laughs> Rinsed off the magnesium sulfate with a little extra DCM in order to get a last few smidgens out of that magnesium sulfate of our organic product. So, so this didn't go quite as planned and one thing that you learn in organic chemistry is that you just have to learn how to play with the solution and try to get it to do your bidding. It's important to get our product extremely dry because both H2O and our product will have the OH stretch that will be very difficult to distinguish in the IR and to prove that we've made the product that we're interested in making.